forgiveness. In order to be a Christian, one must exhibit the attributes of Christ. One such attribute is his willingness to forgive. He forgave often and without any strings attached, and he still does today. Anyone who is willing and led to seek his forgiveness will find it. In Matthew 18, 21 and 22 we read, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. It is said that the rabbis of this time taught that one should extend forgiveness to the penitent, but three times for the same offense. And Peter, knowing the compassion of Christ, and perhaps remembering when Jesus said that if one should compel you to go one mile, then you should go twain, he doubled the traditional number and added one, bringing it up to the number of perfection. But even this was not often enough, since Jesus will never reject anyone who is truly, truly penitent, neither should we. Matthew 18, 23 through 25, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which, it, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay his lord, pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, all that he had, and payment to be made. Each of us was born with the Adamic nature. We all had the knowledge of how to sin and the propensity to do so from the womb. It has been scientifically proven that you don't have to teach small children how to lie. It comes just as naturally as our eyesight. By selling the man, his family, and all of his possessions, the king would only receive a very small portion of the debt which he was owed. In today's money, the value of the 10,000 talents would be over a billion dollars. That's billion with a B. Just as the man in the story could never repay his debt to the king, even with his life, we will never be able to perform enough good works to repay our debt to Jesus for giving his life for our eternal souls. Matthew 18, 26 and 27. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Likewise, when we came to Jesus with the realization, that same realization, He was willing to forgive us the debt, which we could never hope to pay on our own. Matthew 18, 28 through 30, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. It would seem that many who claim to be Christians take the same views on as on forgiveness as this servant. Many are very willing to accept the free gift of salvation, but are unwilling to show others the same forgiving spirit which was shown them. In this life, many debts can be accrued, both monetarily and socially. Unlike the debt that Jesus paid for us on the cross, most of these debts can easily be paid in full, given time. But all too often, these are the debts which keep professing Christians professing and not true Christians. People hold grudges and sit on opposite sides of the same congregation or transfer their membership to a different local church or even leave God altogether. And this among people who claim to be brothers and sisters in the Lord. How might they behave outside the walls of their sanctuaries while interacting with those who may be looking to them in hopes of catching a glimpse of Christ? As Paul said, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written in Romans 2 and 24. When sinners see those who claim to be Christians acting as irreverently as their sinful peers, it can do one of two things. 
It can either cause the sinner to think that he's safe in his behavior since he knows that the person whom he saw acting in such a sinful manner was a Christian, or he will want nothing to do with God since those who claim to be Christians act as poorly as his sinful peers. Either way, the name of God is frowned upon and looked at as trivial in the eyes of the sinful, increasing their belief that if there is a God, He really doesn't care what you do. Matthew 18, 31 through 34. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave, all, forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. Those who profess Christianity will be in for a rude awakening when they stand before the great white throne judgment and hear, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let us do our best to pray for those who are unwilling to forgive, lest this tragedy befall them. Also, let us pray that we don't cause others to blaspheme the name of God as a result of our behavior. Matthew 18.35 So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Jesus tells us that if we're unwilling to forgive others, He will be unwilling to forgive us. It is true that only God can see into the heart of man, and only He knows just who is truly penitent. Seeing as how we are mere mortals ourselves, we would do well to forgive anyone who asks, not for our own sakes only, but for the sake of the one asking forgiveness. Since Christ has forgiven us of the great debt of our lives, it's only fitting that we be willing to forgive the small and insignificant debts which others might owe us. This is just one of the many attributes of Christ that we must display if we are to call ourselves Christians.